Hey, what's happening guys? Mike Moo here. This is a quick little how-to video about using your own router with your AT&T fiber connection. This might work with you for you if you have a non-fiber connection as well. Basically, you want to use your own router, etc. and not be blocked and limited by the firewall. All right, so I just recently got this installed. Uh, you might still hear a drill going on in the background, um, getting some wiring redone over there, but this is how you do it. So after everything's all set up, and of course you need to connect onto the Wi-Fi that is the router that AT&T provided for you. And it is usually of the, the name AT&T something something something. So in my case, it is AT&T 5FE, etc. Got to make sure that you're actually connected to that one. And um, this way you can go ahead and adjust the advanced settings. If you don't connect to it, you will not be able to adjust the advanced settings and you won't be able to proceed. All right. So then what you do is you go to uh, myhomenetwork.att.com and it'll take you to the Smart Home Manager login page and then you got to log in with your user ID and password. If you're a new customer, basically they emailed you a temporary one that you can go in there and reset if you need to. I already had mine uh, uh, set up and I set up my own password and basically I'm just going to sign in at this point. Now, I should mention that the settings on my screen are, of course, going to be a little bit different from yours, but the guide still remains the same in where you go to go ahead and get these done. I had already done this already, tested it out, make sure that it's working. So that's why you'll see that my settings are uh, different than what you might see on yours. Okay, so when you first go ahead and log in, uh, I believe what you got to do, basically what we're trying to do is getting into the configuration page of the router itself. Now, if you know your IP address, you can directly go to that and log in. Um, but I'm just showing this so that everybody can have access to it the way, the same way by going through myhomenetwork.att.com. All right, so I believe you go ahead and go over to, uh, you need to go ahead and do advanced settings. So to do that, um, I go over to devices, and then I go and click on the AT&T Wi-Fi gateway. There we go. And then down over here, it has um, your information. So it should look like this. You know, it's Wi-Fi gateway, ATT, Wi-Fi gateway, etc. So number, software version, IP address. Um, I, def I changed my default IP address on here to a little bit different one um, earlier. But basically, I go into advanced settings. And what that will do is it will open up the correct, um, it'll, it'll link you directly to the uh, direct IP address of the router and that's basically what we're trying to get to so by default it was when it was set up 192.168.1.254 but I changed it so um, so that this is why this one this one isn't working if you know your IP address that's the one that you want to go to for me it is actually now 172.16.0.1 okay hopefully that doesn't confuse you um, it should load automatically for you Okay, it should load automatically for you. You won't have to type that in, um, but by default, it's 192.168.1.1 uh, or, or 1.0. So this should pop up for you automatically. The reason why it doesn't is because my information is still cached. Okay, so this is the menu that you need to get to. Okay, so it looks like this. You know, you got the AT&T home, uh, AT&T logo up there. You got the home services and settings. Okay, and there's some key things that you do with your gateway, restart, et cetera, et cetera. This isn't what we're going to look at here, though. What we're going to go ahead and look at is click on settings. After you click on settings, um, you can go ahead and click on the LAN port. Now, now what I have right now is I have my Orbi Netgear Orbi router set up and connected onto one of the ports in the back. There's four ports in, the, in there. You can pick any of the four that you want to connect to. Basically, your router is going to connect to there. And then from there, the, the router um, that is by AT&T, you know, the ports one through four, that's going to connect onto the internet broadband of your router itself. Okay. So um, hopefully that didn't confuse anybody. Uh, but once you're in here, you're going to take a look at, um, you're going to take a look at the wired interfaces because that's where it is. And you can confirm that it is connected. So mine is connected on the port four. That's the one I chose. It happens to be the closest one next to internet port. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure that you only have one thing plugged into right now, and that's going to be um, the router or Wi-Fi that you're using. Okay. So um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and click on LAN IP address allocation. 
And these are all the devices that are connected on there right now. So I'm going to choose the one that is my router. The rest of these are all connected via Wi-Fi. But I'm going to choose the router here, right here. And what basically what I'm going to do is choose the firewall, disable it for the router. And then the address assignment, make it public. OK, so that means it uses the same IP address as my public facing IP address. And then the WAN IP mapping, choose router WAN IP address default. Well, that's actually, that's the only choice you have available. And then finally, you're going to go ahead and click on save. It's going to take a little while to save it, but that these are the settings that you want. All right, after you do that, you're going to go over to firewall. Now, I don't know if you have, should have to do this part, okay, because it already says it right here that this is already complete. Everything's already allowed through the public IP address facing. So that means it connects directly to my router. But... What you can what you can do um, alternative perhaps you could do this separately is you click on applications pinholes and DMZ which of course stands for Demilitarized Zone and basically I'm going to choose that router okay choose the router that is on here and you know you, the name of your router is going to be very different from mine unless you got the Netgear Orbi set like I did which is why it's called the RBR50 and then what you're going to do is after you choose that these are the settings that you have. Number two, edit the firewall settings for this computer. It's not the computer that we chose. Again, we chose an IP of the, uh, the router that's connected. And then basically, I'm just going to click on allow all applications. So this is the DMZ plus mode. So this will allow all inbound traffic, uh, except traffic specifically assigned to another computer using allow individual application feature will automatically be directed to this computer. That's exactly what we want. We want everything coming in and out to go directly through that router instead. Okay. So it gives you a little bit more details on LAN devices which have public private IP once CMZ mode is selected and you click save. The system will issue a new IP address to the selected computer. The computer must be set to DHCC mode to re receive the new uh, IP address from the system and you must reboot the computer. If you're changing DMZ plus mode from one computer to another computer, you must reboot both computers. All right, just pretty much standard stuff. So um, since it's all chosen by this anyway, and I'm not doing it by assigned IP, and I'm not changing the name of my router, I'm just going to leave it RBR50, everything should be fine. Then you just click on save. So boom, that's all you need to do. Uh, you can confirm all these settings once you come back and um, log back into your actual router, and you can confirm all this information that, in fact, the IP address is going to be the, the uh, external facing one. And that, um, you know, you, you could do all sorts of tests that, that you need to or want to do, but you got to change your uh, wireless IP to your new router. And if you want to, you can just then go ahead and disable the, um, the Wi-Fi because otherwise that's just, uh, that's just adding more signal in that you don't even need anyway. Okay, so, so that, that's one thing you can do. I'm leaving this on here just for now. Um, later on, if I find that I'm just too congested, I'm going to change it out. All right, that should do the trick. Let me know if you have any questions down below. If you got stuck in any uh, point in this little video, what you should probably do is comment down below along with the timestamp on where you uh, got confused or got stuck. And then maybe uh, someone, either myself or someone else that knows more about this networking stuff and AT&T stuff will be able to help you out. All right, please give this a like uh, and share it for people that want to use their own routers on the... Um, on the AT&T uh, wireless broadband network and don't want uh, double filtering or double uh, a router behind a router, for instance, um, and want to be able to have full access to everything that they paid for. All right. And subscribe for more. I do a bunch of other tech channels and video reviews, uh, etc. Just stuff that uh, I find interesting or helpful to people in general. All right. Catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.